Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to create some groups by fixture type so we can quickly select certain groups of lights without having to type the numbers in every time. And we're going to do that by fixture type. You can make groups for whatever you want. Um, fixture type, you can do them by hanging location, you could do them by specific purpose like front light. You can make whatever groups you like. For us, we're just going to do uh, for right now, fixture types, so I can grab certain lighting instruments together. All right, so um, we're going to lay these out in order of fixture ID. Um, and when you're creating a group, just remember that the order you select the lights in is stored into the group as well. And it remembers that. So if I type in 201 through 206 and store that as a group, if I was to apply, apply anything like an effect or um, later on when we deal with um, align functions or any of that stuff, it's going to remember the order. So it's going to go 201 through 206. If I type in 206 through 201, when I recall that group and tried to apply one of those things, it would actually start from 206 and go backwards to 201. Um, same thing, if I was to come up here in the layout view and just start clicking random numbers in random orders, it remembers the order that I clicked them in when I store it to a group. And it would apply effects and aligning functions based on that order. So when you're creating these groups, make sure that you select them in the order you want. For us, we want them in numerical order. Um, so make sure you select them in the right order if you're using the layout view um, and if you're typing in the keypad start from the lower number to through the higher number, okay? So um, in the tutorial here, it's talking about the highlight function. Um, highlight is right here under the please button. And the highlight function is basically um, a locate function. So say you're in a queue that has dark blue lights um, and, and star gobos in a dark theater um, or venue and you're you're noticing that one of the lights has an error but you can't see which light it is all you see is where it's where the light is but you can't necessarily feed that see the fixture to see which light that is that you might need to address the problem if you use highlight um, and you have the fixture selected it will automatically turn on any selected uh, fixture currently in full it will take all color out. It will take all gobos out um, so that you're just getting the bright white light so you can locate that light. It's also handy when we start doing um, fixture positions and we're making position presets because we can actually uh, select a group of lights and then step through them individually using the um, next and previous buttons down here to step through and we can use highlight to see those lights so that we can position them properly. So we're, we're gonna do that a little bit later, um, but just know that that's it's explaining there the highlight function. Always pay attention to this because if you toggle it on, it stays on until you toggle it off. So any light that I select now, it's gonna be on in white at full because I have highlight on. So if you're having trouble with seeing colors or gobos, check the highlight button. I still do it to this day. I leave highlight on and I'm like, why aren't my colors working? Why can't I turn the slide off? Because highlight's on and it's selected. So turn it off when you're done using it. For us right now, we're gonna turn it off. We'll use that later. But that's what it does. It removes all color, all gobo, turns the dimmer on at full and in um, white. It will also take out any kind of uh, focus information as well. All righty. Um, so we're gonna kind of skip that part with highlight right now because we're going to do that later with our positions. We're going to create our groups now. So we're going in order. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, on our fixture sheet here, I only, I only want to see the things in the programmer right now to make sure that I'm selecting the right lights for these groups. I have all these little red locked masks over here. These are the pre-built masks that come with the software. We can't change them or delete them because they have the red lock on them, meaning they're locked into the software. And these are just some commonly used things that you would mask the fixture sheet to. The one we care about is this probe only. And there's also a button in the fixture sheet that says probe only. We're gonna use this quite a bit 
because if I click that, now this fixture sheet is only going to sh uh, show me what is currently um, selected in the programmer or has stuff in the programmer. So go ahead and toggle that on for now into the uh, into that mask. So that we can only see the fixtures we're selecting to make sure we're storing these groups properly. All right, so we're going to start with the Viper washes because those are the lower fixture IDs. So in our fixture sheet or on our keypad, sorry, we're going to go ahead and type in 201 through 206. That is all of our Viper washes. And then we're going to click on please. And in our fixture sheet, we should only see 201 through 206. In our layout view, we see those lights selected as well. Okay, we're gonna, um, if you wanna see these on right now, you can click highlight just to see where they are and they'll display here. I'll leave it on for you so you can see. Oh, no, let me scroll. Now I've messed up, so I have messed myself up. Uh, I hate when I do this. Sometimes if you click in 3D, it messes up this where I can't select things. So I'm just gonna fix that right now. All right, maybe that'll help. I apologize for that. I clicked the wrong place. All right, so we got 201 through 206. We hit please, those are selected. We're gonna store this as a group. So we're gonna hit store and we're gonna select cell number two. We're not gonna start at one because later on we're gonna add all the lights into one group for number one. So we're gonna click on cell number two here. Just gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. All right, when we name these and we have certain only fixed, uh, like one type of fixture selected, you can see here it's tried to name it for me for my Mac Viper Wash 16-bit extended because that's what I have selected right now. Um, I'm gonna always change these names to be something else that I can read better. So we're gonna name this Viper Wash. I'll take that screen away for right now. All right, so we got Viper washes as our first group. Um, we're gonna go ahead and clear three times and move on to the next group. Um, we're actually going to go ahead and scroll down if you want to, to the top of page nine in your tutorial. This, this um, first paragraph sort of uh, bullet point here is telling us all of the groups we're gonna make. And I'm gonna, and it's gonna tell you where to store them. So what I'm looking at is this right here, top of page nine. And this is the layout of how these are gonna be arranged by the end of it. So um, I'm gonna lead you through these, but this is what we're gonna end up with. And this is what we're putting where. Um, and you'll notice here, it wants us to also create some of these more specialized groups. So the top row here is going to be like all of a certain fixture type. The ones below it are going to be uh, lined up in columns for different, either the point ones and point twos of the fixture. Some of them I'm going to split out into functions like stage vipers versus front of house vipers. Same with the quantum profiles. We're going to do the upstage, midstage, and front of house sets of these separately because they're in different hanging positions. So we're just going to go through and create all of these groups right now. So next one we want is our stage vipers. It's going to be 203 through 206. And we're separating these out because these four um, are usually going to be used to fill the stage with the color wash or a stage wash. Um, the other two out more towards front of house are going to be more used for like spotting a person or something like that. 
So we've got 203 through 206, we hit please. We're gonna store this to the group right below the Viper washes, so number 11. We'll name that stay, uh, Stage Vipers. Okay, make sure you clear out your programmer each time so that we don't have these lights still selected. Next one we're doing is the front of house Vipers, so that's 201 through 202. And store that below the stage vipers group to number 20. For uh, this is going to be named FOH vipers or front of house vipers. All right, clear that. We're moving on to our next set of fixtures here. So, next ones are going to be the auras. This is not in the table here. Um, it's actually in the, in the paragraph above, but our auras um, are, we'll go back up real quick and follow these instructions, bottom of page eight. I don't know why they split it out like that, but we'll play along. We want all the parts of the Vipers stored into one group. So we're gonna select 301 through 310. That's all of our aura XBs. Since I didn't put in point ones or point twos, I just used the whole number. Um, it's going to grab both the point ones and point twos for every one of these, which is what I want. So we just hit please. I see in my fixture sheet 301.1, 301.2, etc. We'll store this to group number three. And we'll name this group Aura XB. Now, I don't want to always grab both the point ones and point twos because they do different things. And also, I might want them to do different colors. So I don't want to group them all together all the time. So I'm going to make two other groups down here that split out the point ones and point twos. Now, it would be kind of a pain if I had to go in and type in 301.1 plus 302.1. That's going to take a while. So as a shortcut, we're going to use these macros we created. Now, they are even and odd macros, but if I'm dealing with point ones and point twos, it, it also takes that into account. So for instance, let's say uh, I'm going to do the point ones and store that as a group under here. I'm going to select the big group, number three. So that's all the point ones and point twos. Then I'm going to use the odd macro. I'm going to click that. And you'll see here, it's starting with the first number. And since these are point ones, um, it starts with 301.1. And it skips two or one, but it goes by every two. And then 302.1 is, so I should have all the point ones selected here now using that odd macro. So that's a, a handy shortcut for me. I'm going to hit store and come to group number 12. Um, this is the main part of the fixture. The point ones are the main part. So we're going to name this Aura XB main. Now I'm not going to clear out because I still have them all in the programmer over here. All I'm going to do is click now the even macro, which will shift my selection to the point twos. I'm going to store that to the group number 21. And this is going to be the aura effect part of the fixture. So I'm going to name these aura XB effects. So when you're dealing with point one and point two fixtures, you're trying to separate them out. You can use even and odd macros to select the parts you want. Okay, I'm done with the auras. We're gonna clear three times. Now we're gonna move on to quantum washes. And if you remember, the quantum washes actually have five instances. So there's a point one through a point five on each of these fixtures. Um, I'm gonna, again, start with all of them together. So I'm going to type in 401 through 402 and hit please, which will grab 0.1 through 0.5 for both fixtures. 
Okay, I'm gonna store this into group number four. Name this quantum wash. Okay, so for these, uh, I can't use the even and odd macros to split these out because I wanna make a group with all the point ones, the point twos, threes, fours, and fives separate. Um, I have five instances, so I can't use even and odd because that will not work correctly. It would have grabbed point two and point four, then point one because it's skipping by every two. So that doesn't work. Odd, same thing, it doesn't work. So the shortcut that I'm gonna use for this is going to be the actual interleave command on the console. So we saw when we created the macro, it said interleave uh, 1.2 for odd and interleave 2.2 for even. Um, if I ever just want to um, use the interleave function and set my own interval without creating a macro every time, if we come up here to where our encoder tabs are and we look next to um, under control, we see this one that says MA tricks. We click on MA tricks and then this gives us some of these sorting options and aligning options that the console considers an MA trick. It's sort of just like shortcuts. Uh, and we see here interleave is the first one in the top. Now I have five instances, so I want to interleave by five. So I click the plus sign under interleave until it says five. So I'm going to interleave by five. And now I have all the lights selected. If I use the next and previous buttons down here that we were used for highlight, hit next one time and it grabs the point ones because it's, it's spacing by five. So I grab the point ones there, they're, they're highlighted. I'm gonna hit store, come underneath quantum wash group to number 13, I think. Yep. So the point one of these fixtures is the main part of the fixture. So we're gonna name this quantum wash main. Now I'm not gonna clear because I'm just gonna keep stepping through to the different decimal numbers. So I'm gonna hit next again, which takes me to the point twos. Store that under the quantum wash main group to number 22. This is the aura effect of those lights. So we're gonna name this quantum wash FX. Now I'm gonna run out of room down this column. So I'm gonna skip over to the next column, skip the number five cell, and put the three rings over here, just so they're, they're kind of grouped together. Um, I just don't have room to put them all the way down this list. So I'm gonna hit next again without clearing, which grabs our point threes. So this is ring one, the first ring of LEDs with the outer ring. So I'm gonna hit store, select cell number 14 in the groups pool and name this um, quantum Wash ring. Next again to the point fours, store that below number 14 to 23. Name that quantum wash ring two. Next one more time to the point fives and we're gonna hit store to cell number 32 and name that quantum wash ring three. Okay, so that's all the parts of the quantum wash all separated out. So we're good there, we can clear programmer. And now that we've hit clear, M matrix has turned itself off. So that's good, we want that off. So once we use the M matrix and we clear it out or hit set, it will go back to its default, which is off. Okay, move on to our next fixture type, which is our quantum profiles. So that's gonna be 501 through 511. 
We're going to hit please. And we're going to store this to group number six. Name that quantum profiles. All right, I'm gonna also split these out into their hanging positions as three separate groups. So I'm gonna hit clear three times. We're not actually changing attributes, so you can only hit clear one time just to clear the selection if you want. I do it three times just by habit and safety. Okay, the next group down here we want is our upstage profiles only. That's gonna be 507 um, through 511. Hit please. So there's our upstage ones. Hit store to group number 15 and name that upstage or US profiles. Okay, clear your programmer. We're going to grab the mid stage profiles now, and that is 503 through 506. Please. Store that to the next group down. So number 24, this is our MS or mid-stage profiles. He clear that out. And now finally our front of house, 501 through 502, please store that to group 33 and name it quantum or sorry. FOH profiles. Okay, clear the programmer. Moving on to the next type of fixture, our atomics. Um, again, these have two instances, so we're gonna be making some different uh, groups based on the, the two instances, but first we will do the full set so 601 through 604 please we'll grab the point ones and point twos now let me just give you a little bit of a warning on the visualizer here these are atomic strobes um, so you can see here when i have them in highlight or at full the flashing part you see is the strobe and it is white uh, it will not like look like this in real life these are not beam fixtures you don't see a beam with them all you would see is just a really bright flash of light. So if you're going to program with these later on when you get to like PP4 and you're doing it on a visualizer, these beams don't exist. So the solid beam you see on is actually just the aura effect on the front of the fixture, the point two. Um, it doesn't produce a beam of light that comes out of the fixture. It just colors the faceplate. The visualizer produces a beam, but that's not there. So don't use these to light the stage. It's just for like eye candy. Just a warning there, because I see a lot of people using these and they're not actually, if you were to look at this in person, you wouldn't see these beams. All you would see is just the face of those lights lit up and then the bright flash. All right, so we're gonna store this as a group. Store number seven, group number seven. Name that Atomic. Okay, we're not gonna clear the programmer because we're gonna use our macros to grab the point one and point two separately. So we're gonna start with our point ones. So click the odd macro, which should short, uh, sort us out over here to just point ones. We're gonna hit store and store that to group number 16. The point one, again, is the main part of the fixture or the strobe part of the fixture. So right now, all I see is the strobe flashing. So um, we stored that, we're gonna name this Atomic Strobe. All right. Um, now we're gonna do the even to grab the point two. So pressure even macro, point twos. All right, hit store. 
Group number 25. Um, in this group, we're gonna name Atomic FX because this is the aura effect on the front of the fixture, on the faceplate. All right, clear out three times. Last set of fixtures here is our Kryptons. These are down on the stage deck. So we're gonna select 701 through 704. Please, we'll store this to group number eight. And name it Kryptons. Now, I'm not gonna split these out into separate groups. There's only four of them. If you wanted to, you could you know, store a group for the outer two and the inner two just to split those up. That's if you want to, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but you could create some separate groups. You could grab like one and three, um, two and four for some even odd sort of stuff. If you like to do that, just go ahead and store those under here. Okay, clear. So that's all of our separate groups. Now we're gonna grab all of these lights and store them into a master group here, number one, that's just gonna be all of our lights. So we're gonna click these groups, the top row in order. So we're gonna click two, three, four, six, seven, eight, which would grab all the parts of all the lights. And store that into cell number one. And then we'll name that all automated. Okay, clear out three times. So that is good for groups. That's what we're gonna make for now. Again, later on, you can create your own if you want to that are narrowed down even further or by location or however you like. 